Okay, in the last video, we looked at the period detail report, and I noticed something that made me curious. Demolition mobilization was delaying, and it wasn't critical, and then it was continued to delay, and it was critical, and then over the weekend, we got to Monday, and it became non-critical for one day before becoming critical again. And so I want to find out what's going on. And so we're going to use the Gantt chart and a really powerful feature in Delay Analyzer, which really is solving mysteries like this. So what I'm going to do is the first thing I'm going to do is I need to know what day it is that the mystery happened. And it looks like it was September 12th. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to back up maybe to that Friday before September 12th. So I'm going to jump into the Gantt chart. I'm going to change the timeline from weekly to daily. Uh, and I'm going to jump back to that Friday. Okay, so we're at the right point in time. And now uh, I'm going to just do a little bit of setup on the Gantt chart. Uh, so I'm going to go into group sort. I'm going to get rid of WBS to just look at activities. I'm going to sort it by, let's say, remaining early start. And then I'm going to jump into the filter. And instead of showing all activities, I'm going to show activities that are only on the current longest path and the longest path at any time from the current period. OK, and now I'm going to jump back into the report and we're going to focus on demolition mobilization. So we're right where I want to be. I click on this activity and uh, I don't currently see it because it took us to the period two, the beginning of period two. So I'm going to just quickly jump back to that Friday and scroll to the left here so that we can see what we're looking at. And here we are demolition mobilization. And it's critical on that Friday. Now I'm going to use the right arrow key to move the data date forward by one day. So to go forward and back by one day, you use the right and left arrow keys. And there you can see it's now non-critical. Uh, and, and so if I go back uh, forward to Tuesday, I can see it becomes critical again. So this is the mystery that we want to solve. So I'm going to freeze here on Monday, September 12th, which I can see here and here. And I am going to zoom out. And to zoom out in and out, you hold the control key down and you use the mouse wheel. So we are looking at the longest path here. And strangely, it is the longest path, but the green is showing me that it's non-critical. Now, how do I know that green is non-critical? Well, I go to my trusty legend here, which is currently collapsed, and I can see that here, green is non-critical. So all of the colors, all of the icons that you're going to see, all the help is just one click away. Okay, so we have a lot, we have activities on the longest path that somehow are non-critical until we get to here, building C foundation start. And now this is longest path, but also critical. And we are at this point in time, Monday 912, when this weirdness occurs. So now what I'm going to do is hold the control key down. I'm going to point the cursor where I want to zoom to, and I'm going to use the mouse wheel to zoom in. And now I can see what the what, well, I see the answer, actually. I'll, I'll zoom out a little bit. The shaded areas in the Gantt chart are non-working time. And you can see, for instance, that uh, like Stakeout Building D, Install Footings North Foundation, well, those have the same calendar because the stripes are pretty much the same. Short stripes from Friday, 5 p.m., uh, sorry, the uh, weekday, 5 p.m., to the next weekday, 8 p.m., and longer shaded areas over the weekend. But notice something about Building C Foundation Start. It has non-working time. It has a three-day weekend here. And so because this Monday is non-working time, and because it is 
working time for the rest of the uh, path before it, we have a day of float. Now, how do we know that we have a day of float? Another way of looking is just to scroll to the right. And sure enough, I can see eight hours, eight hours, all the way through poor Wall's column until we get to where it's critical again. So I've really solved that mystery pretty quickly using Delay Analyzer. So where the tutorial really helps are the features that aren't obvious that you just have to know about. And so uh, I, I've shown you the left and right arrow keys for moving back and forward uh, a day in time. You can see that here. But the up and down arrow keys, they'll move you through the timeline. And in this case, because the timeline is set to daily, I can move up and down and go forward and back a day in time and see the Gantt update. But if I were on, let's say, the weekly timeline, now the up and down key arrow keys would move me forward and back a week in time. The other thing you can do with the left and right arrow keys is you can move by the hour forward and back. So the data date not only has the date, but it has the hour. If I hold the control key down, now right arrow moves me forward an hour and left arrow moves me back an hour. And sometimes you might find that you need that. The other thing I can do is if I hold the shift key down and left click, well, that brings the data date to where my current location is. So if I move over here and shift click, the data date moves there. But you can also move the data date back and forward in time. And I'm just going to bring the path a little more visible by clicking and dragging it. So if I click and drag, now you can see another way to move forward and back in time. This is why we call it a 3D Gantt. You've got the two dimensions of the Gantt chart, which is time and then the WBS, of course. But you can also move forward and back at point in time. And that's the third dimension. Thanks for watching.